So are you guys having fun? Is it everything you thought it was going to be and more? You've been waiting for months for the return of hockey, but you're still going to be waiting a couple more months because we are enthralled in a classic case of October scam hockey. Who watched Pittsburgh a couple nights ago? Who watched Pittsburgh? I got texts about Pittsburgh saying, worst team in the league. They're going to finish dead last. But then as I told you guys yesterday, there's a certain percentage of mail-ins you're going to get where it looks like a glitched out controller. And then it's just on to the next one. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that Pittsburgh, the night after that completely embarrassing loss, goes into Stevie Bong Rips' his home? and takes out the Detroit Red Wings. I'm sorry, Stevie. Well, look, if you look on the positive side of things, your team started like 5-0 and last year. You were laughing your way saying, Stanley Cup champ, it's coming back to Detroit 2023-2024. You started hot. You know how it ended. Maybe this time it will be the opposite. But you look around and you're seeing Connor McDavid held pointless, the Oilers, a period away from the Stanley Cup and instead shut out on their own home ice. You have the Devils who lost to a double backup after Toronto was shut out the night before. I tried saying, like, don't just think Florida's going to go in there. Florida loses to Ottawa. This is as standard as it gets for early season hockey. I hope you're aware. I hope you know that's why I'm not dishing out money lines. Everybody has to learn the hard way. I learned the hard way for you. You now don't have to walk on that Ace Ventura 2 hot coal. I've already done that for you. So now we can just continue on. And I will give you some sniffs that I had to be creative with on this Friday. I was looking at these games and I'm like, okay, we will find some solid trickle-down snake economics value, of course. But I found a couple crafty unders. You guys obviously remember that Josh and I have a personal bet. Tampa Bay Lightning, 100 points. I took the under, he took the over. And I said, this is their whole success is contingent on two things. Number one, Vasilevsky. And number two, they're absolutely lethal year after year top five power play. I've already mentioned how I love teams early in the season who already have pre-existing power play chemistry. Well, Tampa was one of those teams. Now, they're not one of these teams. They had the same pieces in the same positions. This is the first year in, I can't even remember how many years, where it's going to look completely different. And it's for that reason that I'm going to take, this is a, such an interesting one. You would never think you get a minus 115 on this. The under half of a power play point for Nikita Kucherov. We're getting him priced at the elite power play price. I believe without Stamkos and then adding Gensel a lefty and the rejiggering that's going to have to take place, Taylor Radish on there. No, this, is, this isn't the same Tampa power play. And I'm going to be early to the party. It's wild to me. Minus 115 power play point under. And then I see something else. I see the Blackhawks going to play the Jets. And we're back to regular season Jets, I suppose, where... You hold teams to two or fewer. You shut out Edmonton in their own building. And then you probably get eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. But we're 81 games away from that. And instead, we have Chicago going into Winnipeg. We know how great they were defensively last year on their own home ice. You know, if you guys remember, I theorized that part of the reason they got destroyed by Colorado was because they made those trades for Toffoli and Sean Monahan, And then post-trade deadline, they went from this team who just tried to squeeze the life out of you to now we got, look, two good lines and two good power plays. We can go back and forth with you. And they did a post-trade deadline semi-identity shift. I think that cost them. I really think if you're going to try to win defensively, you should really try to win defensively. I know it's almost counterintuitive. So don't get good scores at the trade deadline. Yes, is what I'm trying to tell you. Anyway, that, that's a conversation for another day. We got Winnipeg, who had one of the most absurd streaks of holding opponents to two goals or fewer on their own home ice last year. If I see Connor Hellebuck starting in this game, give me the under two and a half goals for the Chicago Blackhawks. They didn't look all that great in that first game. They were able to pot a couple of goals, 
but I didn't see great chemistry on that top line. So much to the point they had to add Felino to it mid-game, and uh, I'm sorry, but at this point in his career, adding Nick Felino to a top line isn't going to make it all that much better. So I'm going to go with the under two and a half. I can give you a way to get that under two and a half and plus money, but I actually think this is good to take on its own. This is a weird deli slice of an under. Not as weird as the Kucherov, because that's a good one. Give me the Connor Bedard under half of an assist. Now, look, he happened to get an assist in that first game. Did he get, he ended up with, he may have ended up with two, but we obviously know he's a shooter. He's a shoot first kind of guy, and Tara Vinen's a pass first kind of guy. So you give me that under half of an assist at minus 115. Who knows? Maybe I squeeze by. Maybe he picks a corner, rips a bullet, and I'll survive. But the fact that you're not talking about like 125, 130, but this is the Blackhawks on the road against a defensive team who just shut out the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, I think that's a pretty decent sniff. Give me the under on an assist for Connor Bedard. Yeah, I know playoffs are a time for unders, but if you check some of those crevices, you can find, wow, good price on an under half of a power play point. Okay, good price on an under half of an assist for a shoot guy first. I'll take those if the prices are good, but it doesn't mean I don't still have a good couple of point plays for you, some plus money point plays. And the first one is in Carolina. Carolina, they kind of had to re-tinker their lineup. They lost... Brett Pesci and Brady Shea. Brady Shea was running that top power play unit. Brent Burns, he's kind of phased out because, I mean, he's pushing 40 and he wasn't as effective last year. So what they did, they brought back somebody who they traded for two seasons ago at the trade deadline who has already played on their power play and he's going to be on the top unit in this game. Go look at all five members of that power play. You have the big four forwards with Aho, Sveshnikov, Jarvis, Natchez, and... All those guys are minuses. Now, wheel in that plus money Shane Goss to spare running the point on that power play. I mean, he's a power play specialist. This is a great price against this Tampa team. I'm going to take the over half of a point for Shane Goss to spare, who's going to be running that power play. This is one I'm tempted to take the Carolina Hurricanes as well. I think the loss of some of those offensive pieces will make them, like the Jets, default to who they really are. They thought they were more offensive than they should have been. And then what happened? They blew a two-goal third-period lead to the New York Rangers. A, a blown two-goal lead in the third for the stingy Carolina Hurricanes from two seasons ago who were trying to win every single game one to nothing. That wouldn't have happened. I'm going to go with Carolina to get back to their ways and win a low-scoring defensive game. Give me Carolina over the Tampa Bay Lightning. And then in the late game, I'm seeing Philly take on Vancouver. Vancouver, scam Coover. Kind of looking what I thought. I mean, they played Calgary, couldn't hold a lead on them. I don't know, after giving up all those goals, I'm open to playing these player props against them. You saw those Calgary guys go off. I really want to play... A top line, top power play player for plus money. A guy that Josh definitely isn't taking for rookie of the year, nor am I. And that's Matvey Mitchkov, the rookie sensation for Philadelphia. He's going to be playing with Travis Konechny, and he's going to be on that top power play for Konechny. Once again, great value. You take it while it's in the plus money. This will not be this way. Whether you guys are hitting on some of these or missing on some of these, what I can assure you is that there's going to be a time you look back and say, somebody's actually going to tell you, like, no, I had Mitch Koff for a plus money point. He was never a plus money. Somebody's going to say, he was never plus money for a point. You're making that up. You're a liar. You have your whole fake account where you show me your fake wins. No, he was never plus money for a point, but he is. And that's why I'm suggesting that you take him. And because he's on a line in the power play with Konechny and c Lobs and Vancouver was hemorrhaging chances and goals the other night. You know what? Let's run a little sprinkle on the two-pointer between them. Two for Mitchkov, two for Konechny. And I haven't seen the price on Jack Eichel, but if you find yourself a plus 140, if you find yourself a plus 140 or better, the Blues are playing back-to-back -back nights, but they're saving Binnington for that game. 
But you know, he's my flag plant player of the year. Came through with four points in game one. If you get the over one and a half for anything better than plus 140, I will take that too. Always think, always think when you're going to click on a money line. Oh, wait a minute. Anybody can beat any team easily. Not even, they don't even have to get lucky. They can easily beat the defending Stanley Cup champions. Ottawa hasn't been in the playoff God knows how many years. They just beat the Stanley Cup champions. Went up went up on them early. Never looked back. Game was over. That's it. That can happen any single night. Okay? The Cup finalists are currently one and two. All right? So just keep that in the back of your head. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. Couple things here. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, obviously. Number two, Check out a Dave and a Dan, which is going to be up, you know, a little late on Friday. I'm not going to be able to do my own football video, so I'm going to give out my my weekend picks on a Dave and a Dan, doing some birthday celebrations with the family. I, you know that it's not me. I think everybody should just sit there and do nothing on their birthday. Like they, they should go out, but just go out regularly, like you would that Saturday. Me and my old boss used to say this. I know some people believe like, oh, you shouldn't believe uh, celebrate your birthday after a certain age. S what are you celebrating? As my old boss used to say, you're just celebrating that you're not dead. That's really what it is. It's like, oh, I'm I'm still here. Let's now all get together, and you have to come find time to do this, that, and the other. Well, while you're doing that. You can find time to join the Patreon because that's where I post my weekend picks. I'm not, I'm not, I'm already slaving all day looking for trying to find all these lines. And then as soon as I'm doing that, then I'm off to the football and answering questions. So I don't do any videos on the weekends, but I will be posting this Saturday and Sunday NHL picks on my Patreon. So if you want that, come over there. If not, don't worry. I'll be back on Monday for some fresh NFL NHL sniffs. Do you like the thumbnail? How's that for some laziness? I go, I'm not making it. Give me half of that one. Give me half of that one. I live like Harvey Dent to begin with. I will see you guys Monday.